recorded. And welcome our last presenter today, Daniel. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I'm Daniel, I'm at Matalar. And uh, my project is called Iron to Icon, Forging the Sacred from Fragments of Tradition and Technology. And my work is over there in the corner. So first I want to talk about why I'm here and doing what I'm doing. And then I'll show you some of my past work that is relevant to what I'm doing now. Then I state my research questions, talk about the sort of most important term here, the sacred, uh, go into my approach and uh, then share some of the process and results and some closing statements. So while I'm here, uh, for 13 years, I was working with peace and conflict research and uh, uh, was objectively speaking an, an amazing job. Um, and my, my sort of most proud achievement is getting the international community to start geocoding foreign aid flows. So it's possible to see what's actually happening uh, with our money uh, that goes to Africa. For instance, that was my specialization. Uh, but it was a very disembodied activity, sitting with a computer and looking at tons of data and that kind of stuff all the time. And uh, I tried to push on the feeling that this is a good thing to do, but it was just uh, too much for me. So I burned out. And uh, yeah, I feel like I want to do something where I'm creative, but I can use my entire being while doing it. Uh, so, and on the side, I, I have been working with metal and sculpting uh, throughout my time working. So that was why I jumped into it full time. Now to my relevant past work. I first connect back to my, uh, one of my research uh, things I've been doing, which was to figure out how warring parties control territory in, in wars. And for me, towards the end, I got just more interested in the sort of in the patterns that I was starting to like create with the algorithms I was developing, uh, and that has kind of come into the metal work, where I've experimented with getting patterns by combining metals and uh, by stamping it into metal, and by taking pieces and putting them together into sort of fragmented uh, shapes. I've also worked with uh, the sort of the more uncanny parts of being human, uh, sort of masks and uh, combining iron and wool. I also had a chance to do two markers for a cemetery, uh, a, a commission of two items, uh, which brought me into that sort of thinking about sacred spaces. Uh, for my bachelor exam, I focused on, on the body, the sort of the core uh, of what we are as humans is our body. And it has been the same for thousands of tens of thousands of years, if not more. Uh, it hasn't changed anything, but our environment is completely changed. For my first year at the master, I kind of did the a bit of a reverse from what I'm doing now. I took a very high tech method of sintering uh, bronze powder, but making them look like they were archaic objects. But that was great and all, but I didn't feel like I yeah, got to do what I wanted to do, working with my full body and hands. It was much more like a calmer thing to do. So I uh, went away from that. So the questions I'm asking for this project is first, how can I make objects with varying utility while retaining a cohesive aesthetic and varying utility could be uh, vessels of different uses and masks and so on, but feeling like they can fit together. And secondly, how can metal smithing and resulting objects constitute the sacred in a way that feels meaningful for us today? So for the concept, the sacred, um, I'm uh, mostly inspired by a uh, historian of religion, Mirsha Eliad, and his concept of the eternal return, which is the idea that in traditional societies, people would have this 
uh, this drive to consciously return to creation stories and such things. And the rituals where they were actually sort of reliving those pivotal moments. Uh, so finding ways to connect back to myths and as I see it, what it means to be human in many ways, Ar archetypical uh, stuff that you do like fishing or hunting and how that can have a, a centering function for you to, to return to those sort of the, the things, things we're made for in many ways. Uh, so metal smithing has uh, a long story of being connected to the sacred from making uh, the, the cups you have for uh, communion in church and uh, all kinds of things. Uh, here are some more esoteric items. Uh, from pagan culture, we have shields that were sunk into, uh, into shallow waters as an offering to the underground, the underworld. And from Christian era, we have a relic that has been clad in armor. So uh, I've gotten into um, the symbolism of the tree, which I will talk about more, and how that can symbolize uh, a directionality up and down. Uh, here we have a, a mask of Alexander the Great that was worn by Roman, by Roman soldiers. But that was, that was, after that, taken here to Scandinavia and repurposed, purposed, given eyes, and uh, one eye was ripped out and buried in the ground. And the rest of the mask was standing there. So it was a representation of Odin and uh, how he got wisdom from, uh, from Ymir, the, the water, underground water. And in Christianity, there's this interesting break from the use of masks that we see in indigenous cultures and in our pagan past, where uh, masks are no longer needed from, for various theological reasons, and we have the icon instead. Uh, so here we have uh, the god and man combined, and this particular icon is inspiring to me uh, because you can divide it up and see that the right si side is sort of pointing towards heaven and the, the left side is the more earthly grounded uh, version. So this directionality that I'm looking at. Uh, so my approach uh, is, first of all, for achieving this cohesive aesthetic, I'm starting from a very primary and primal metaphor, the, the tree. And uh, for the reasons that uh, uh, it is a symbol of the sacred, because it has this sort of this centering, uh, centering function, uh, which is what the sacred does. It, it provides orientation for peoples in, in their communities and also for us in our, our lives, if we have a sort of sacred moment, we feel centered. Uh, so we have that and the directionality upwards and downwards. And there's also this branching, this sort of, uh, this uh, fractal pattern that spreads out, which uh, from a uh, really, uh, um, Theological perspective can speak about God's immanence that is presence in, presence in the world, or uh, from an animist perspective that there is sort of spirit in everything. So, so that's why it's such a, a heavy, important symbol. Uh, I just uh, show uh, two references here. Marta Gulliksen, she, she's writing about, she's a researcher writing about the connection between consciousness and the unconscious in in crafting. And uh, she's also making a Purkinje series of vessels where you have this sort of this branching, which is based on nerve cells in the brain. And also Julio Gonzalez torso of iron, which uh, kind of is a, a tree trunk for me and speaks of sort of earthly qualities. So the second approach I have for achieving a sense of the sacred is uh, about connection. And for my project, I can't go into perhaps the most important part, which is the sort of social part of, of, uh, of uh, consecrating something as being sacred or so on. Uh, like an altar that is placed in a church undergoes a ritual, which makes it sacred. Uh, but there's also this connection backwards in time uh, through tradition. Uh, so for me, then, it becomes about 
the handcrafting and that tradition, which is what connects me backwards to the archetype of the metalsmith in the past and, that's, and the spiritual function that the metalsmith would have had. Uh, more specifically, the metalsmith is a peculiar archetype because in the metalsmith, the mythos uh, and function is this of creating technology and increasing te technology. And for us, it has meant that technology has sort of taken over and made the metalsmith redundant in a bigger social uh, function. Uh, so there is this sort of undoing in the archetype itself, which makes this sort of balancing interesting for me to find the balancing between using machinery and automation opposed to the handcrafting. So for my process, uh, I've tried a lot of things. I've been casting bronze, doing tests with that, making uh, things for push, pressing together copper and, and bronze to make Mukumagane, a Mukumagane plate. And I've also, I have some test pieces over there, uh, done that with iron and copper. Uh, but in the end, I decided on focusing on iron for what I'm doing here now. Uh, for various reasons, but it was nice also just to have a focus on the pieces now. And I've taken, like, I found a big chunk of uh, mild steel that I worked, forging it out and keeping it the center very thick, uh, which is something I've done in, in two pieces. But uh, the most sort of uh, meaningful process for me was uh, hauling a bunch of uh, wrought iron from the forest between Dos Longhead and, and uh, Fengish Fosh together with three other uh, metal people. Uh, so a lot of iron we collected and this is very similar to the iron that, that's been produced for thousands of years uh, in how it, how it was produced. So it's this antique iron that I mixed with uh, the type of steel that we have in, so that was from an old sawmill, and it's mixed with the type of steel that we have in saw blades today. So, so it's this fusion of our, our technology and, and that of the past. So stacking it up and in different ways to achieve a pattern. And I have also uh, some pieces here that I've already forged together and forged out and, and put in here. And then it's, forged together into one homogeneous piece uh, and uh, and then that's flattened out and I'm going to show a film of that and uh, also I've worked with wool again and uh, to make a vestment uh, sort of a costume to go with the mast and uh, for that part I'm I can see connection to to art as well Joseph Boyce a uh, very out there uh, performance artist, uh, but also working with material and, and presenting material in different ways together with his, his uh, performance. So here he has, in this picture, he has iron under one foot and felt under the other. And then we also have, uh, uh, sound is very important for me in the experience of forging, the, the, all the rhythm and the sounds. Uh, and here is uh, Dadaist Hugo Ball, uh, who coined the term sound prayer, prayer with, uh, from an antique text where vowels were used for God's name. And he had an experience when he was doing a Dadaist poem as an atheist, uh, where he had a sort of spiritual experience from just coming up with words. Uh, so he became a Catholic again. So uh, I'm going to show this film of my process and using all the items.
Yeah, so, uh, so that was uh, kind of an image of how the, what I'm working on with the mask as well, how uh, you can have sort of the individual manifestation of something, the individual flaws, like a voice, uh, but how there is this sort of um, like, uh, like icons represent an ideal in some way. And through the uh, throat singing, you can like pick out to notes that are more the same for everyone. If you, if you sort of take out the parts of your own voice by creating a, uh, a thing, a partition in your, in your mouth. Uh, so for the results, uh, connecting back to the question, how can I make objects with varying utility while retaining a cohesive aesthetic? Uh, I found that starting from this primary me metaphor was helpful. Uh, I have uh, since kind of uh, not been as literally adhering to it that I thought from the start. It's mostly the, the pattern welded, welded mask and vessel in the back that kind of I feel hit on this the most. Uh, but I, I thought it was a helpful way for us today to sort of connect to, uh, to the sacred when we are disconnected from, from myths and stories of gods that we no longer know. I really like using asymmetric stacks of Damascus, which you also can see there how you get some areas that are really large and some smaller and smaller, which is sort of a, a fractal pattern. And then also work, uh, working with uh, polishing and etching or not uh, doing it. With the vessels, I, I found out that I enjoyed having inner curves in the vessels. Uh, so I previously had flat bottoms in some, uh, but I reforged some, a couple of them to get sort of inner curves. And also I have pronounced the jaggedness of the edges that comes from the Damascus process. I've uh, reinforced that in other other vessels as well. Um, for the masks, I ended up focusing on sky, earth, underworld as the sort of coming from the tree symbolism. And uh, also this sort of the individual representation of traits as compared to more uh, sort of ideal ideas is something I've uh, sort of unconsciously worked with, I guess, in, in my work. So uh, a big finding was uh, the holes from, in the mask you need holes to breathe or to speak or to see, and how I did those uh, impacted the, the end result quite a lot. Uh, so that's something that's been interesting to work with. And for the question of how can metal smithing and resulting objects constitute the sacred in a way that feels meaningful today. Uh, for the, so I had this uh, balancing of handcrafting and using of machinery. And in the end, uh, I could have used machinery more. I wanted to be very careful when working with uh, pattern welded steel to not break it too much either. But in one of the balls, it's on the ground. I did press it initially, it's this one. And then I hand forged it forged it a bit. Uh, and uh, in the future, I will do more of that to, to just get things going faster. Um, it was kind of in the, uh, in the masks that I found the sort of most, uh, the process that felt mo most sacred or where I ha had more, a lot of presence to the moment. Uh, but uh, for the vessels, uh, yeah, here it, it also depends what the utility depends on uh, a lot of things in making the mask, uh, in making the vessel, such as its thickness. Like the thickest one, I can have a fire in. Uh, and if I want to have uh, water in some of them, I will have to accept that they may rust or, or not, depending on how I've treated it. Uh, for the masks, they were, they are, as they are now, primarily just uh, sort of I iconic function rather than wearing so much. Uh, I don't have, I, I haven't attached any le leather to wear them, so I, I took a piece of uh, bandsaw steel and uh, magnets just to wear it, but that was uh, very painful. Yeah. <laughs> okay.
uh, uh, so we can skip some of that. And I just show the pictures to close off. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. 